All right. I would like to uh, welcome uh, Jim Dahl. He has agreed to give a special presentation on um, some of the bike and pedestrian improvements that are coming to uh, Tyler and Harrison. So take it away, Jim. Okay, well, thanks, Steve. Um, so I, I agreed to a presentation. I'm not so sure how special it is, but uh, well, at least uh, I'll present what the project is. So I'm gonna try to share my screen. Okay, so are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Can you see us down the side? I, I, I see, uh, yeah, I can see you still, and yeah, I, I still see the some of the names or whatever. So yeah. Okay. Great. So, so I've got my screen split. So hopefully this will work. So. All right. Technology is always interesting. So. <laughs> um, so again, my name is Jim Dahl. I uh, appreciate uh, being here. I am I am project manager with the Oregon Department of Transportation. Um, and yeah, I appreciate the opportunity to kind of just uh, present this project that we're working on in Corrales. Um, and really for this group and this meeting really focus on what kind of pedestrian and bicycle improvements we're proposing to make to those locations. Um, and so kind of where we're at with this. Um, so just a little bit myself, um, I, I will say I do actually live in um, Corvallis, live in South Corvallis, and I also do actually bicycle to work. So I do, I'm a, a bicycle user. Um, of course, that should be inconsequential because as far as ODOT's concerned, we should be making the, the most appropriate improvements uh, anywhere within the highway um, within any kind of setting we have. So, but um, I, that I live in Corvallis, I do ride bicycles. I, I do have an interest too and in to see that these improvements are um, the best they possibly can be. So, um, okay. So again, this presentation is gonna be fairly, uh, hopefully fairly straightforward, fairly simple, but uh, just want to go and really identify where the project's located that we're planning on working on and then summarize what the goals we have for the project, um, what guidance we used to come up with our design proposals, um, and then go into the more detailed about what specific improvements, bicycle and pedestrian in particular, we're pl planning to make on Harrison Boulevard um, and also at a couple intersections on Tyler Avenue, Tyler Avenue and 2nd Street and Tyler Avenue and 3rd Street. Um, so again, this project is located in near downtown Corvallis. So basically as you come off the Harrison Bridge over the Willamette River, that's the start of our project. Um, so it runs along Harrison Boulevard um, from 2nd Street to 4th Street. Um, and then in addition, we are doing a couple intersection improvements on Tyler Avenue at 2nd Street um, and also at 3rd Street. Um, so for that's the city streets, but for ODOT's concern is Harrison Boulevard and Tyler uh, and 2nd and 3rd Street are actual highways also, right? They're highways on top of city streets. So for us, we see this as US 20, which is 2nd Street, northbound, southbound, um, OR 34, east and westbound on Van Buren and Harrison. Um, and then also of OR 99 West, which is northbound and southbound. So we see as making improvements to the highway, um, and in case in this case, make improvements for uh, road users. So, so that's kind of where we're at for the location of the project. Um, what are our goals for the project? So really when this project was first identified, the one simple goal was actually just to replace some aging traffic signals along Harrison Boulevard. So Harrison Boulevard and 2nd Street, and Harrison Boulevard and 3rd Street, have some traffic signals that have aged um, and for safety and for maintenance concerns, we are just talked about replacing them. Um, once the project was identified and funded, additional funding was uh, found and was used for this project to actually then make some additional pedestrian and bicycle improvements within the project limits. Um, and so some of the things that we then, we're gonna, with that extra additional funding is upgrade non-compliant ADA curb ramps. So the, the ramps we walk on there, now, obviously, some of that work would have already been done under the signal replacements, but we actually are doing additional intersections um, with this additional funding. Um, and really with this goal, since we're going beyond just replacing signal poles, we're trying to design um, these project areas, these corridors, small corridors that they are, to reduce conflicts between different road users. Um, so again, motorized vehicles, pedestrians, bicyclists, and freight trucks and traffic too. Um, um, so look to improve the safety and comfort for all uh, active transportation users. Um, and also what I didn't identify is that these are three highways here, Oregon 99 West, OR 34 and US 20. All of these we identify as um, what we call freight routes. 
Um, and so any changes we make to the configuration of these highways, we actually have to get concurrence from a mobility advisory committee um, to, for these, uh, to make these changes. And again, one of those people on that board would be freight users, right? So again, there's a lot of freight traffic in this location. If you've been there, you obviously see the, the trucks in there. Um, and it's not just the trucks are going just straight through the, the city or whatever. They're actually a lot of times making turning movements, moving from one highway to another. So for instance, a lot of turning from OR34 westbound coming off the Harrison Boulevard Bridge and then turning northbound on Oregon 99 West 3rd Street. So again, we have to make sure all our, we can accommodate all freight traffic in these locations. Um, and finally, one of our goals is always, whenever we're working within a, a local agency, in this case, the city of Corrales, we wanna stay consistent with the transportation system plans that they have in effect. So again, we don't wanna do anything that's in conflict or it's gonna impact um, their future goals of their um, city. So, so what did we use for guidance for what we designed? Um, and, and again, here it kind of talks about what we have, you know, what our traffic volume was, our speeds and stuff like that. But really, our this design team used um, our ODOT Highway Design Manual. And in there, they have criteria of whenever you're doing designs within an urban corridor. And, and so we use that criteria to come up with what we think are the best, the appropriate facilities for bicycles and pedestrians in these locations. Um, obviously, within the constraints of the where we're at, right? So, I mean, if there's a building in the way, you're not going to tear that down. But again, what goals we can within the, the, the framework that we have. Um, and under our guidance, we identified this area as a tier one facility, which is a separated buffered bike lane is what we're proposing. And again, that's primarily going to be along Harrison Boulevard where we're doing a corridor work. We're actually working multi-blocks. It's hard to do things just at a single intersections for that. Um, but again, also beyond our highway design manual guidance, um, we also use coordinated and discussed with the city of Corrales about what their needs were for these areas, what they would like to see um, and make sure any improvements we made to the project or to the area were in a conformance with their, their systems plan. And again, their ultimate goals for this project. Um, again, one thing that we talked about that they mentioned um, a lot was that they are actually proposing, and I'm sure you, this uh, group is well aware of that, of a, a neighborhood bikeway um, facility along Tyler Avenue from uh, First Street, um, I guess, all the way through the city is kind of what I've heard. Um, and so obviously any improvements we're making on the highway, we wanna make sure if we have the, the capability, the infrastructure ability to be uh, in compliance with that ultimate goal in there. And I think that's what we've done with this design is uh, hopefully we'll be able to show. So what improvements are we actually looking for this project? So again, in, in addition to replacing those traffic signals on Harrison Boulevard, um, what we're proposing, our design team, um, and again, it's not me, it's it's everyone else does all the work. I just, uh, I get to get, give these presentations. So um, so right now, Harrison Boulevard is, has three travel lanes. Um, and then they have a shoulder and bike lane on the north side of the road. Um, our design team has proposed to maintain those three travel lanes. Again, because there are so many freight routes um, and churning movements, you, we can't reduce those, those travel lanes. But uh, having a shoulder on the north side, but instead of having the bike lane right next to that north travel, northern travel lane, have a concrete separation, um, and then having a bike lane behind that concrete separation, have a planter space, and then have a sidewalk behind that. So the sidewalk, the bike lane are separated, but then also all of that is separated from the motorized vehicles. Um, and so to kind of concept this, this is a, a cutout I had of a plan sheet that we have that we're proposing. Um, and it's, kind of a little complicated. There's a bunch of these bubble things. Um, this is actually a striping plant sheet. So all these bubbles show what kind of striping we're gonna have. So white, W means white stripe. You know, RA is a right churn angle or churn arrow. So, but really it is the best sheet to show exactly what we're proposing for the bike lane. So here is the, if you can see my arrow, um, off the bridge, second street, there's a bike lane. They would cross traffic, cross the intersection of second street, and then move into this bike lane. And this bike lane is actually separated. This really dark area is concrete. So it's actually separated from the northernmost westbound travel lane, motorized travel lane. So there's a separation. And then this checkered area is actually a planter's buffer um, for where you'd have trees, put the trees back in, and then we'd have our sidewalk back there. So we're actually providing safety for that. Um, also, we are proposing to use uh, some green paint, in this case, at uh, any conflicts of driveways, 
you know, so those are potential conflict points. They'll put green paint in. Um, also, uh, from Second Street, where there's the bike lane and then there's a right turn lane on the right side of the bike lane, you know, putting green paint. The city, I see that several places in the city of Corvallis. Um, also, um, basically identify that as a potential conflict point. Um, and so, if you're on Harrison Boulevard moving westbound on a bike, you'd be separated. Um, and then, if you keep moving, from through Third Street, you would be continue to be separated. And then as you get to Fourth Street, you'd be separated. And then once you got past Fourth Street, which is really the end of the highway, um, there would be a, here's a concrete uh, little separator that your bike lane would be, and you would transition back to the bike lane being right next to that um, westbound travel lane, a motorized lane, uh, as we go into the city street. Um, so that's kind of what we're proposing. And again, these areas, we kind of see these are all this is green paint we're identifying, um, using as again as potential conflict points. Um, and again, it's kind of hard to see. And then there are some turning movements. Um, one thing also we're proposing, um, and this may not be what you seem as necessary for, for improvements for bike safety, safety, but at these inter individual intersections, we're actually proposing pulling back the curve a little bit um, and actually creating a concrete apron um, so it's that great. So trucks would be able to use that, have a little wider, flatter curve to do, to make those turn movements. And so they wouldn't be jumping on the curve, which happens on a regular basis in several of these intersections. Um, so again, that's improving the safety of people that are standing on the sidewalk or curb behind the curb. Um, also, it's uh, actually helping the freight community by being able to make those turn movements a little easier without having to worry about jumping up on the curb or hearing some infrastructure on there. So. Um, so some of the improvements we're gonna make uh, on there for even truck movement, which in my mind also makes improvements, safety improvements for bicycles and pedestrians in there. So that was Harrison Boulevard. Um, if we look at the individual intersections on Tyler Avenue um, and 2nd Street and Tyler Avenue and 3rd Street, this one's 2nd Street, um, we propose these solutions. And really these were um, at the guidance of the city of Corvallis. So the city of Corvallis in their neighborhood uh, bikeway along Tyler Avenue proposed um, restricting motorized traffic on Tyler Avenue. And so one thing we looked to do was, in this case, this is US 20, 2nd Street, north and uh, southbound. Right now there's a travel lane northbound, travel lane southbound with two bike lanes on either side and a center turn lane. So our proposal is to actually install a median separator uh, across from Tyler, uh, perpendicular Tyler Avenue to restrict vehicles, motorized vehicles from going across Tyler Avenue. Um, and again, this is what the city wanted. And again, this is a change to our highway. So we have to have to get a concurrence from our freight industries uh, uh, um, uh, individuals. And they actually did support this position, which I was, and actually had no qualms about it. So that was really great to hear. So, um, but to kind of visualize this. Um, so again, this is a plan view of what we're proposing. So here is Tyler Avenue and here's Second Street or US 20. So we're proposing some kind of island, um, a concrete uh, separator with cutouts for pedestrian crossing, and then also cutouts for bicycles either way of that. And here is a, a image of it. This is not anywhere. This is uh, in some another city. It's actually an image we actually received from the city of Corvallis is what they thought is the concept of this would look like. So as you can see, there's a, a concrete separator um, we are proposing, I think, put some kind of signs or bollards or something like that to further provide vertical um, uh, vertical clearance or whatever to show that you should not be going to across this. Um, but again, allows bicycles and pedestrians to cross Tyler Avenue, but not motorized vehicles. So that's kind of what we're proposing on this. Um, and then for the other intersection, Tyler Avenue and 3rd Street, um, we are proposing uh, again, not a whole lot of changes. Again, we're kind of limited what we can do again with the existing configuration of the road. Um, but right now there are two travel lanes, both northbound with parking on either side and then a bike lane. And then our proposal actually is to maintain those two northbound travel lanes, maintain the bike lane, but actually have curb extensions that come out much like they have in uh, the downtown Corvallis area that you see um, you know, across from the white side and stuff like that. Um, which really would then shortens the crossing distance of pedestrians. Also, it has the pedestrians um, be out more in front of any parked vehicle, so they're more visible to the, the, the traveling public or motorized vehicles. 
So again, on a plan view of this, is this is Third Street, which is northbound. This is your Tyler Avenue. Instead of having the curve go straight, we're actually bumping it out a little bit to allow the pedestrians, again, a shorter crossing distance, but again, become more visible if there's a parked vehicle back here. Um, and so those are really the improvements we're looking. Again, those Tyler Avenue improvements were really um, through um, consultation uh, and discussions with the city of Corvallis to, to hopefully stay in compliance with what they're hoping for that neighborhood uh, bikeway. Um, and so that's really what we're looking to do, um, but I'd be more than willing to answer any potential questions you may have. Um, so that's great. Thank you. thank you so much, Jim. Um, maybe keep sharing your screen because I bet there'll be some questions about uh, different yeah. slides. Yeah, yeah, um, I figured there would be. And I, I, I almost said you get to interrupt me and ask questions, but uh, <laughs> I, sometimes it's easier to get the presentation and then I'll, I can answer questions. But yeah, I'll go keep ahead. This one open because I think this has happened the most. <laughs> All right, I'll just call on people um, as they raise their hands. So go ahead, James. I uh, thanks, Jim. That was a great presentation, and I I wanted to point out one other feature that was barely visible, but um, is another element of it. Would you go to the Tyler slide that showed the median? That one. If you look at the northeast corner, you'll see a. I'm pointing at it, but you can't see my finger. There's a there's a spot where the path that comes from the waterfront oh, yeah. joins the street, mm -hmm. so that bicyclists aren't directed into the sidewalk where pedestrians are. Yeah, no, thanks for pointing that out, James. So that was actually something we, our designer identified, you know, was something we completely missed, but we started looking at it. There is an existing multi-use path. It's wider than a sidewalk and it basically goes there. Well, we actually transitioned it to the street, which everyone has to do anyway if you're a bicyclist, so you're not bicycling on the sidewalk. So it is hard to say, but yeah, this is that transition point. So this actually ties into that, that path back there. And then this is just an actual sidewalk, not for bicyclists. But thanks for that softball question, James. I really appreciate the ODOT support. <laughs> You're welcome. You're um, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, then Daniel. Great. Um, actually, thanks. That that question from James just makes me think I had a, a, two questions, but just since you just clarified that and you're still sh showing the slide, um, that James was talking about is will there will be an increased potential for right hook conflicts if you're the if the cyclist is coming into that right turn lane? Is there, is there a way to manage that? So that is not a right turn lane right now. Um, mm -hmm. It is just a lane that you well, I guess it becomes a right turn lane because that's the only movement you could potentially do legally, right? Um, but it's not right. a two separate lanes. It is a, it becomes a share row where my understanding is it's just a shared thing for that where the bicyclist can actually go forward, um, but the yeah. vehicle must turn right. So um, great, great. we haven't thought and of anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and my, the first question I had before I saw that was, um, this looks wonderful, what's the timeline? <laughs> so um, we are still designing, actually, um, like I, we started this meeting and Steve actually saw me, we were talking to a property owner. So right now we're in our acquisition. Um, so most of the work we need to do are, is within existing public right of way. Um, so we won't need to do anything, but there is some temporary, well, we have temporary construction easement because, you know, we have to, to do some work, we have to go a little beyond our right away. So we're in the process of actually acquiring that. Um, that should happen most of this year, but where our plan is to go to bid in, I believe, uh, so, oh, shoot, I should have known this date. Um, the fall or winter of 24 and then construction 25, 2025 and be a one season project. Um, and I will say part of that delay of the construction, because we probably could have done this a little faster, but part of the delay is because you have another project. I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it in the area called the, the Van Buren Bridge Replacement Project um, that uh, is significantly could be impacting this area. So we try to minimize the conflict between the two projects because they really are one block apart from each other. <laughs> Right. Go ahead, Daniel, and then Dave. Hi, thank you for the presentation. My question is pretty simple. What's the lane width on Harrison at this point? Uh, well, that's, a, you know, actually, I stole this PowerPoint presentation from my mobility advisory committee, and that's all they care about is lane widths. So okay. I actually had all that information on here, but I didn't think you guys would be interested in it, so I actually removed it. Um, but right now, there are basically uh, 12 foot lanes. Um, there's that, the, if you, well, I can actually go back to, so go to, whoops, I'm going the wrong way. So 
they are 12 foot lanes. This lane, which is the southernmost lane on Harrison Boulevard, is actually like 14 or 15 feet. Um, but it's not enough for parking. It's just basically there was extra space and so they put it in the lane. So um, our proposal actually is when we keep the 12 lanes, we're actually shifting the travel lane slightly to the south a couple feet. Um, and I, again, I don't know if you're familiar with this. If you, I mean, most people still drive. If you're coming off the bridge, if you look straight ahead, it's hard to know which lane you're supposed to be in, um, which is why they have a little bit of little striping um, to tell you to direct you to the proper lane. Um, by us shifting to the south, we're actually going to, that's called a skew um, in designer terms. We're actually improving that skew to actually not have that shift of vague. And so that should be more obvious that it would be easier transition off the bridge onto the three lane Harrison section. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead, Dave. Uh, thank you. I have a few questions. First, uh, back in the slide when you were talking to Wendy, uh, the question of bicycles going straight through. Uh, on Tyler with the right turners potentially hitting them. Will you have continuous green on that bike lane so that the drivers know that bikes are going to go straight? Because I use that a lot. Yeah. Uh, so you're talking about for the uh, vehicle that potentially could be behind the bicyclist on Tyler Avenue is what you're talking about? Well, if you look at uh, the traffic, a bicycle coming from heading westbound on Tyler. Yeah, mm -hmm. would want to go straight through mm -hmm. that uh, little break in the uh, barrier. And a driver is going to assume that everybody's turning right. Unless they get serious notification that some people are going to be going straight. You're so, talking about uh, the, the second street traffic vehicle, right? No, this is a, uh, a vehicle heading westbound on Tyler, who is going to have to turn northbound on second. I think I think Dave is assuming that the bicyclist will not take the lane, so the car behind the bicyclist will come up beside them, then be looking left and taking a right, right where the cyclist will be going. I got you. Okay, thanks. Uh, that does clarify. Um, so we had not proposed putting any kind of green paint on here. Um, um, one thing is the the maintenance of that, um, and also it's. The conflict you're, is actually back here. So you actually would say you'd want to see some kind of an island for there or? Bike box. Yeah, well, there's no traffic light. So a bike box would be questionable or of questionable yeah. value. But uh, some way that a driver would know that bicycles might not be turning. Because a driver seeing this situation would assume everybody's turning. Um, well, I could definitely bring that back to the design team. Um, and see if they have any kind of potential solutions for that. Also, whatever we propose, though, we would have to make sure the city is comfortable with because um, Tyler Avenue is a city street, and then they would be responsible for maintenance of anything that we would put there. Um, so, but I could definitely bring that back to the team. Thank you. Uh, my second question uh, has to do with the width of lanes on Harrison, because cars coming, uh, cars and especially trucks coming off off the bridge, tend to not think in terms of 25 miles an hour. They've just come off Highway 34 going, if they if they actually drop to 40 miles an hour, they're used to 40 miles an hour. It might be advisable to just narrow those lanes. So, so it was discussed, I will say it was discussed about whether we can narrow from the 12 foot to 11 foot lanes or something like that. Um, it based, we kind of ruled it out um, basically, the one thing is, with the understanding that these are three freight routes, um, and again, it's it's different where it's not just the tr the trucks have to go just straight through these areas. They actually have to have churning movements, and they actually need width and stuff to actually be able to do those churning movements. Um, and, and so by narrowing it out, um, we thought there'd be more conflicts um, with trucks being able to turn onto the other highways. So it was something we looked at. Um, and it was something we did, uh, we definitely did look at it seriously, but we thought because of the, the uh, taking care of all road users, we ruled it out at some, at some point. Fairly. Well, maybe narrow the center lane. Or just uh, something that lets the drivers know that you're going to a lower speed limit. 
Yeah, I, I will say I have I actually been on this, watch this intersection several times, especially at Harrison and Third Street. Um, and I've seen a lot of freight trucks actually take two and even three lanes to be able mm -hmm. to turn right onto Third Street. Yeah. So again, mm -hmm. I, I think they almost need, they need a lot of width in some of those configurations, truck configurations to make that churn. So um, again, something we thought about, um, but we did not, um, we thought this way by actually, and I will say actually freight was really pleased when we presented this to the mobility advisory committee, we were very pleased that we actually were separating the motorized vehicles from the bikes. Um, they actually liked that approach um, mm -hmm. because they felt safer and felt like they had less chance to harm other people because they don't want to run over anyone, so. Good. And my final question, you mentioned in the grass area between the bike lane and the sidewalk on Harrison, mm -hmm. you were going to put putting in trees. Yes. And I'm wondering if there's any risk of tree roots growing under the bike path and causing bumps and such that you need to choose trees that go straight down. Yeah. So, so I, I, again, I will say the city of Corvallis who has to maintain the bike lane has the same concerns and our landscape designer is working very closely with the city of Corvallis, um, uh, Forrester, I don't know exactly what their title is to make sure we're going to plant the proper trees at that location to minimize any kind of future maintenance of the bike lane. And it's our interest to, to maintenance of the highway too. We don't want them coming up on the highway. So. And we love trees. We're desperate for trees. Uh, we have to prepare for climate warming and uh, it just makes our city more beautiful. So I'm, I was so happy to see that those trees. Um, and like we were talking about earlier this week, Jim, this is my route to work on Tyler crossing. And, uh, and I'm so happy to see this island, um, you know, because uh, cars are going really fast on second, heading out of town. They're always going over 25 miles an hour. So they're just like, I'm out of the city. Now I can go 35 right away or more. Mm -hmm. And in second, coming the other way, let's see, going south, um, they're trying to make the light. They're also just barely starting to slow down from 45 and 50 uh, farther out on the highway. And so um, I'm thinking the island itself will probably create a little bit of friction um, to slow things down. Yeah. Um, but I'm also wondering about like vertical protection for pedestrians and for the island itself. Um, you know, if you put bollards, say, um, at the mouth of each crosswalk, uh, and and on the island, it would it would give a vertical feel of cars going faster. Is there any thought as far as the width, uh, narrowing it as absolutely as much as possible, um, or adding vertical elements to slow cars down in this uh, intersection? Okay, so uh, it's a good question. So I I, I agree. I believe that. And again, I am. I always want to make disclaimer. I am not a traffic designer, a traffic engineer, um, but I do believe, uh, and through what I've heard discussions, that the island will be a calming mechanism for okay. traffic moving north and southbound on 2nd Street. Again, it's something in the way, so people are more cautious because of that. Um, um, we are proposing, I think, putting, a, if you can see it, there's these three little circles on both sides of each, on the very end, is putting some vertical um, ballers or delineators um, there. Um, I don't think we were proposing putting anything. I think this one doesn't show, but I think there also was some proposal putting signs um, basically between the pedestrian crossing, the bike crossing, and here, you know, these three little areas to really prevent Tyler Avenue people from crossing. Um, as far as the width of the separator, my understanding, this is about the narrowest we can be, um, which I think is proposed is about eight foot is our width of the a concrete separator um, because we have to be ADA compliant and we have to be able to fit the truncated domes which basically is two, there's two ADA ramps on either side of it. So just to be able to accommodate the width of those truncated domes, this is about as narrow as we can go. Um, and we can't go wider because we need that. Right now, this is narrowing down this area to 20 foot clearance. Um, so we do get some wide loads in here. And so that would actually further impact freight traffic. Um, so the width of it is kind of where we're at. Um, you know, we can look, I think we are talking about some kind of vertical, but it's more for the Tyler Avenue vehicles um, so that to know they can't go across. Um, and I think this was not designed to be a refuge, but as a, as a, just a fleet crossing, really the overall width of the high, the road or the highway is not very far. So it's not like you have these like a five lane highway that you're trying to get halfway across before the light changes on you or something like that. 
it's fairly narrow. It's just, it was really to provide some kind of a divider, a separator, so Tyler Avenue couldn't get through. Um, but again, people could use it as a refuge, but that was not the intent that on my understand of it is. And then my other little quest question is, um, Tyler between second and third. So one thing I've noticed riding pretty much every day on that road is that lots of people, when they see they're going to miss the light, take a left on third and head to second to try to make a different light. And so since Tyler is a neighborhood bikeway, do you want people cutting through like that? And um, I don't. Um, and I was wondering if uh, ODOT or the city uh, thought about cut through traffic on that little stretch. Um, so, so to cut from second to get to third street, right? Um, I'm thinking third to second. So they're coming is, oh, is that fourth? No, this is second. Oh, third's third going out of town. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a normally little confused. What I, normally what I'm I confused. see, what I've seen is just with my, since I live in Corvallis, I see a lot of people take third street cut Tyler to avoid the light on second street light to go northbound on 20 and then take a left on to go northbound. So it's continuing northbound traffic. So that would prevent okay. that. I think um, I was confused there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So I, all I, right, I think block where people going south, you have to go all the way to fourth street and most right, of it in right. that case would actually just keep going to all the way to, to Harrison and catch that at that point. So. All right. I think we have time for one more question. Go ahead, court. Oop, you're on uh, mute. Can you go to your Harrison and Third Street slide? And I have a kind of a boundaries question. And that is that um, how is this all going to connect up with the bridges and with actually the Harrison buffered bike lane? Because as you, I actually now, when I go south on uh, Second Street, I go right to Harrison and I think it's safer to turn left, turn right and go up Harrison rather than use Tyler to go anything West. So anyway, when you get to the uh, fourth street, the uh, bike lane, um, I think it's at fourth, at least it, it's uh, between fifth and sixth. You have no real bike lane. That's like anything on either side of it, or it's going to be like anything on either side of it. Because to the west, you have a buffered bike lane. Then you have this actually buffered bike lane with a buffer. And so you're going to have one block of just kind of an old bike lane. So it seems like something ought to be done to think about that as a problem. The other boundary thing is that um, when the bridges get rebuilt, the connection between the bridges and these bike lanes is going to be very um, useful and interesting and complex because you'll be coming from the from the east on the bike lane that's on the east side of the river and you end up I don't know how you're whether how you're going to move over to get across the river if you're going to the west but anyway you right now you would be dumped right there at at second street and Harrison and so um that's fine as far as I'm concerned going to the West, but I also like the buffered bike lane on Van Buren and coming out of downtown sometimes I'll come out, um, oh, uh, on First Street and then go up behind there and pick up a uh, second. But anyway, how is the bike lanes that will be coming from the East over the bridges gonna connect up with this whole system? Okay, well, I'll, I'll first speak to the Harrison Boulevard past 4th Street. So once we get past 4th Street, that's a city street only. And so that'll be up to the city of Corvallis to see what the transition would be back into, I think when you get to 6th Street, that buffered bike lane. So I, I think ODOT's thought was, we're trying to through the highway, the portion that's actually the highway. Well, now I understand that, but this is a boundaries problem. This is ODOT shifting over to Corvallis and we, we need some coordination, it seems like. Um, I guess I, uh, I, I guess I, I'm not fully. Well, following. maybe Josh Caps can answer yeah. this. I don't know, but yeah. So, so again, I, I think our approach is just to, again, we're only going to make, we can only make these improvements on the highway. So we are transitioning right back to fourth, past fourth street to the city street. Um, and there is, you're right, two blocks that will be 
kind of an old standard bike lane versus that buffered bike lane that starts at 6th Street. So hopefully, the, I don't know if the city has a plan for that. As far as coming off the bridges, so um, my understanding of the Harrison Bridge, there is no plans to make any kind of changes to the Harrison um, Bridge, right? The, the Van Buren Bridge will be replaced. And so if a, a bicyclist now is coming off of Harrison, just going straight, um, they have to just go straight on there and then would transition into this uh, this separate bike lane right, right. on Harrison Boulevard. Um, and then going out of town, if you're going eastbound on Van Buren, I, I've seen the plan sets, but I am not as familiar with the Van Buren plan sets to know exactly how that transition. Um, obviously, we do have here at, uh, if I can go back to Second Street, you know, we do have a way to get to the Second Street bike lane on uh, you know, that take you, will take you to Van Buren. Obviously, I know there is a, 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 a multi-use path underneath the, the Harrison Bridge that would then yeah. somehow tie into the Van Buren Bridge. Right. Um, and I do understand there will be a nice multi-use path on the new Van Buren Bridge that I would see a lot of people would want to use. And then there would have to be some kind of way to transition if you are wanting to go westbound, again, off of Van Buren to get to Harrison. Thank you. Hey, one, one final, final question, Sarah. I'll keep it really quick. If you can go back to the slide you were just on, um, further to the west. Whoops, uh, the Harrison one? Yes. Um, this seems like a really cool opportunity for Corvallis to have some protected intersections. And I'm curious if um, you could address what might be happening uh, in these spaces where the the it looks like the buffer continues into the intersection or the bike lane goes straight but i know you're needing to pull the curb a little bit um to make sure the truck apron works on third street but on fourth street you've got this spot where um it looks like the bike lane sort of uh continues uh past the crosswalk are you are you seeing what I'm seeing? I can't point to it. <laughs> yeah, I know. So uh, okay. this so going this way on staying on Fourth Street or or on Harrison Boulevard. Um, for cyclists who are westbound on Harrison Boulevard, yeah, yeah. Um, if they is there enough space for a bicycle to dwell to the west of the crosswalk there in a protected space before they cross the vehicle lanes on Fourth Street? Um. So I think when you're here, my understanding, this is still separated from the travel lane. So if you're parked here, which is what you're talking about, right? This is the bike lane. If you're parked waiting for the yeah. light. Yeah. Um, is basically, this is a concrete separator right here. Um, so you are still protected. I, I don't, I yeah, don't know if that so qualifies the, as a bike, set, a bike protection or whatever, but. Yeah, no, that's cool. So, um, so effectively the stop bar for bikes is um is past this the pedestrian crosswalk and yes. in front of the vehicle lane in such a way that people would kind of see you yes um that's that's great that's really yeah, exciting so, i think that yeah, might qualify as corvallis's first protected intersection although it's just a, a piece of an intersection but that's really neat thank you yeah though so, so we have to keep the bike and the pedestrian separated and so the idea was yeah they'd be in front of that the pedestrian crossing so they wouldn't be standing there parked while people are trying to cross the road. So, Jim, thank you so much for taking the time to present this to us. This is fascinating and uh, looking forward to this getting built. Yeah, um, yeah. so I should have provided my contact information, but uh, uh, obviously if anyone does have any future questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, Steve, you do have my email address, so you can feel free to share yeah. that with anyone. I know James Feldman's got my contact if he needs to get hold of me too. So. I'll post the website in the notes too. So, okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Oh, well, much thank you. So, yep. All right. You guys have a good afternoon.